Here's Team Cerberus with a different legged robot. This is the animal, and so there's actually a decent amount of uh, comparison you can do between our spots and our animals on kind of how they're able to handle this terrain. Um, these legged robots, again, are really good when they have the, these rails that come out, um, but there's a lower center of gravity that you get with the animal that we, um, as we were watching yesterday, saw that that might have uh, contributed. Well, as we head on into Cerberus, and you already mentioned the different legs from Animal to Spot, and you can start to really see the joint system on the legs here. Yeah, this is essentially the, I don't know if it's exactly the same, but it's very similar. Scott says it's the same point as we just saw with uh, Spot. Now, it doesn't mean that Spot couldn't make it up, but um, Animal was able to, to figure this out. I, we, we think that because it has that lower center of gravity, Gravity, that really helped at this point. That's a great point to bring up and you can see it kind of scanning the environment as well. And that's the thing about Cerberus, they have drones that they can deploy, they have UAVs. They just chose not to do it and that was because they had faith in, in what uh, they were able to provide, just those four uh, animals and then they also have a communications uh, 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 drone that they can use, or a communications UGV that they're able to use to support that. Are there obstacles? Sometimes we add dynamic obstacles in. Just behind this spot is actually one of those dynamic obstacles. You can kind of see that latch there. That is a, considered a collapse of a certain environment and spot now not able to get through there. And, and didn't actually, that, uh, that, that animal did get stuck there for, uh, I, I believe, the majority of the run. So uh, you, they lost part of that given that dynamic obstacle. That communication nodes, and so that one was an important thing to be close to. Well, we saw this same steam area, steam tunnel, in the virtual world. Now here's a look at it in reality. An animal trying to go through from Team Cerberus. Yeah, there weren't a whole lot of robots that explored this part of the cave, um, but there is a, an artifact in there, and so um, I believe that they catch it right there um, as they go by. So that was one of the ones that not everyone achieved. And just 15 minutes left. You can see those reports really starting to tick up. 13 on the scoreboard for Team Cerberus at this point. With only 11 minutes left now, Cerberus, where are they as they approach a backpack? Will they correctly identify and locate? It looks like they've definitely seen it. Will it come up on the scoreboard? That's the question for Team Cerberus. Five active systems on board. Sectors explored, 18 now. You can see it. You can see it thinking. I think there's a, a fair assessment there. <laughs> a lot happening within that system. Now, this is where things get fun. This is what we have left in terms of our scorecard. Cyro Data 61, 20 points. Cerberus, 17. What else is dramatic? How about Team Cerberus? There's their animal. There's that higher railed edge that we've talked about. They just start racking up the points. The scoreboard that we had was 16. Now we're all the way up to 18, only 30 seconds later. This was really exciting as well. And again, they're kind of getting high centered on that rail as you continue to see those scores increase. I haven't quite seen this approach. <laughs> Using no. the rail almost as a guide. It was unique and I, and I think. Flowed their systems quite literally in order to get back and report Cerberus up next. Almost through all of their attempts, but a very solid score now at 20 points. And they're still exploring that spot and keeps going through and making sure